Hello and welcome to the chapter 6 assignment, problem number 5. And I chose problem number 5 for a couple reasons. One, there's a lot of reading here and I really do want to show you how to parse out a lot of reading into what's most important. Two, problem 5 deals with both z-scores and normal distributions, calculating probabilities from z-scores and also calculating z-scores and data values from the probabilities. So it works both ways. It requires you to use the back of the book, the back of the book table, which is the Z table, which is inside the front cover, uh, back cover. So you'll want to have your book uh, handy when you do this. Um, and of course, it actually uses these equations. Um, the first equation you'll recognize as the Z transform. X represents a data value. Mu is the mean of the data. Sigma is the standard deviation of the data and z corresponds to that the z-score for that x value. That's the top. The second is equivalent to the first. Just note in the first you're given x and you need to calculate z. In the second you're given z or you already know z and you need to calculate x. Part D of this problem is going to use the last. Part A, B, and D will use the first. So we'll get a lot of practice in the first, the top, and we'll get a little practice in the bottom. But again, notice that these are just two equivalent uh, equations. Just here, if you were to solve this top for x, you'd get the bottom. If you solve the bottom for z, you'd get the top. So nothing new there. So let's begin problem five. Now I'll read it out loud. You read it to yourself softly, or maybe do a little dance. I don't care. In the book, Advanced Managerial Accounting, Robert P. McGee discusses monitoring cost variances. Okay. So from that first sentence, I know that cost variances is my variable of interest. So every place I see something referring to cost variances, I'm just going to say x, <clears throat> assuming I can say x. So in the book Advanced Managerial Accounting, Robert P. McGee discusses monitoring x. An x is the difference between a budgeted cost and an actual cost. Yeah, we don't care about that. McGee describes the following situation with Michael Bittner, who is a very famous person that no one has ever heard of. Bittner has responsibility for control of two manufacturing processes. Every week he receives an X report for each of these two processes, broken down by labor costs, material costs, and so on. One of the two processes, which we'll obviously call process A, involves a stable, easily controlled production process with a little fluctuation in the variances. Process B involves more random events. The equipment is more sensitive and prone to breakdown, the raw material prices fluctuate more, etc., etc. It seems like I'm spending more of my time with process B than with process A, says Michael Bittner. Yet I know that the probability of an inefficiency developing and the expected costs of inefficiencies are the same for the two processes. In other words, he just said the means are about the same. The mean of x for process A is about the same as the mean of x for process B. It's just the magnitude of random fluctuation that differs between the two, as you can see from the information below. In other words, the standard deviations are different. The means are the same for the two processes, but the standard deviations are, are quite a bit different. Process A has a smaller standard deviation than process B. At present, I investigate X if it exceeds $2,531, $2,531, regardless of whether it was process A or B. I suspect that such a policy is not the most efficient. Well, between the two of us, I suspect the same thing, otherwise we wouldn't have a problem here. I should probably set a higher limit for process B. And again, I suspect that would also be the case, otherwise no reason to say that in this problem. Okay, so that was what Bittner said. The means and the standard deviations of the cost of, of x for processes a and b when these processes are in control are as follows. So this first table refers to processes a and b when they're in control. The mean of x for process A is 1, standard deviation of x for process A is 4871. 
the mean of x for process b is 1. The mean, uh, standard deviation of x for process b is 10,285 when the two processes are in control. We'll call that table 1. Furthermore, the means and standard deviations of, the, of x of processes a and b when these processes are out of control are as follows. Notice the standard deviations are not different. Standard deviation of a does not depend on whether or not it's in control. The mean does differ, however. Mean of x when process a is in control is 1. The mean of x when process a is not in control is 7190. Similarly, the mean of x when process b is in control is 1. The mean of x when process b is out of control is 6455. First table is when the processes are in control. Second table is when they are out of control. So we'll call it table 1 and table 2. Problem A deals with the information in table 1. So let's read A. Can't go down too far. Close enough. Recall that the current policy is to investigate a cost variance if it exceeds 2531 for either process. Okay. Assume that the cost variances are normally distributed. Okay, that's important. Um, and that both processes A and B cost variances, I mean X, are in control. Okay, so we're dealing with X being in control, the processes in control, so it's table one. We need to find the probability that the cost variance for process A will be investigated. That is, we need to find the probability that x is greater than 2531 for process A and for process B individually. So we need to find the probability that x is greater than 2531 given its process A and A control. Given the mean is 1, standard deviation is 4871. Let's go ahead and bring in Excel. This looks good. Almost. So first step is to calculate the z-score. So the z-score here is equal to the x value, which is 2531 minus mu, which is 1, divided by the standard deviation, 4871. So 0 0.5194005344 is the z score, but we need to recall that we round our z value to two decimal places. So rounded. This is 0 0.52. Probably should make column A a little bit wider. There we go. 0 0.52. Now we have our z-score. Now we need to find the probability. Oops. To find that probability, we need to go to the back of the book to what's called the z-table. So go to inside the back cover of the book. And you'll see a table on the left-hand side and a table on the right-hand side. Those two tables are essentially just one table made longer, or made shorter, or wider, or something. Look at the structure of the table. If you look at the margin along the left and along the top, those will correspond to z values, or so those are z values. What's inside the table are probabilities. Along the margins are z-scores. Inside the table, probability. So if we have a z-score, we can find the corresponding probability inside the table. If we have a probability, we can go to the margins and find the z-scores. Here, we are given a z-score of 0.52. So I look along the left-hand margin for 0.5. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. There it is. I see 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And now I go across until I get to the column that is headed by 0 0.02. When you do that, the number that your finger is pointing at, the 0 0.6985, that's the probability.
What is that the probability of? That is the probability that z is less than or equal to 0.52. That's also the probability, and here's something that's kind of important. That's also the probability that x is less than or equal to 2,531. So that 0.6985 is both the probability that z is less than or equal to 0.52, and it's the probability that x is less than point uh, is less than 2,531. But we don't want the probability that x is less than 2,531. We want the probability x is greater than 2,531. Well, less than or equal to is a complementary event to greater than. So to get the final prob, it's just equal to 1 minus what we just calculated. So the probability, when process A is in control, that we're going to investigate it is 0 0.3015. How did we get that? We were given x. We were given mu, we were given sigma, that means we calculated a z-score, rounded it, went to the back of the book, and to the z-table, found the probability corresponding to 0.52, realized that that probability corresponded to the probability that z was less than or equal to, and we realized we don't want less than or equal to, we want greater than, so our final probability is just 1 minus that 0.6985. I can type. Now try and let, let's go ahead and do that with process B now. First step is the z-score. Then we're going to round it. We're going to round it. Then we're going to go to the back of the book to get the corresponding probability that z is less than or equal to that z-score. And then we're going to actually calculate the probability that z is greater than that z-score. So again, the z-score is equal to 2531 minus mu. Here, since we're doing process B and since we are in control, mu is equal to 1, divided by sigma, 10285. And again, that came from this z-score formula. We were given the x, we had mu from the table. We had sigma from the table. From this, we calculated our z. The z-score is 0 0.24598930.5. Connect one sheet around that to two decimal places, 0 0.25, because the 5 rounds up. We now find the probability. So we go to the, to the inside of the back of the book. We look for the probability corresponding to that z-score of 0.25. To find the z uh, that probability, we look for 0.25 on the margins, 0.25 along the left margin, point, I'm sorry, 0.2 along the left margin, 0 0.05 along the top. I see 0.2 along the left margin, 0 0.05 along the top. I get a probability of 0.5987. That's the probability that z is less than 0.25. That's the probability that x is less than 2,531. We want exceeds. We want greater than. So that final probability is just going to be equal to 1 minus what we just calculated, 4013. So assuming the processes are in control, we'll, we will investigate a with a probability of 0 0.3015. We'll investigate B with a probability of 0 0.4013. Because 0 0.4013 is greater, we're going to investigate B more often. Problem A dealt with Table 1, the in-control processes. B is going to be exactly the same as A, except we're dealing with the out-of-control processes, the Table 2 processes. 
So just to check that you're doing this and that you understand this, calculate these two probabilities using the table 2 uh, values. Do it with the calculator or scratch paper. And go ahead and hit pause right now. OK, are these the two values you got, the two probabilities? Probability for process A is 0.8315. The probability investigating process B is 0.6480. Here's how I calculated them. Again, we're dealing with the out of control tables. So that's 2. We still have x value of 2531. So it's still 2531. The mean has changed, 7190. Standard deviation is still 4871. We get negative 0.95647709. Round that to two decimal places is negative 0.96. Go to the back of the book to get that corresponding probability. Negative 0.9 along the left-hand side of the table, 0 0.06 along the top. Where those two, uh, where those two meet, it's 0.1685. That's a probability that z is less than negative 0.96 which is the probability that x is less than 2,531. We don't want less than. We want greater than, or we want greater than. So the probability is just 1 minus that 0 0.1685, which is 0 0.8315. For process B, same exact steps. x is 2,531. The mean for process B out of control is 64.55. Standard deviation for B is still 102.85. That gives a z-score of negative 0.38152.6495. Rounded to two decimal places, it's negative 0.38. Going to the back of the book, looking for negative 0.3 along the left-hand side, 0.08 along the top, we get a probability of 0.3520. 0. That's the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 0.38. That's the probability that x is less than or equal to point, uh, 2,531. We want greater than, so 1 minus 0.352 is 6480. And we notice that process A is now investigated more often. If both processes are almost always in control, that means that problem A is almost always reality. So process B is going to be investigated more often. Problems A and B followed this process. We were given x. We need to calculate the z-score from that. Round that to two decimal places. Find the probability corresponding to that. And the step going from the rounded to the prob, we had to use the table in the back of the book. Prob to f prob, the final probability is just 1 minus prob, because that's the difference between looking at less than and looking at greater than. Looking at greater than. Problem D. The first half does this process in reverse. Instead of being given x and having to calculate probability, we're given that final probability, and we have to calculate the value of x, or in this case, what Connect calls k. So we're given the final probability. That final probability is 0 0.3015. We don't, that's the probability of being of being less than or, I mean, I'm sorry, that's the probability of being greater than or equal to. Go, if we're going to use the back of the book, we have to use the less than part. So the prob here is just equal to 1 minus what we just calculated. So in the back of the book, we're going to look for that 0.6985. That's a probability. So we look in the body of the table for 0.6985. We're looking for 0.6985, looking for 0.6985, looking for 0.6985 in the body of the table. And we see, we found, we found it. It corresponds to a z-score of 0 0.52. 0 0.52. That's the z-score that corresponds to a probability of 0.6958, of 6, 985. Now we're not asked for 
the z-score we're asked for an actual value of, of k or of x in this case which means we have to use the bottom formula here we have a mu we just calculated z and we got a sigma and we need to find out what that x is so book uh, connect calls this a k so that is going to be equal to mu well what was mu for process B in control. Mu for process B in control was 1. To 1 plus. What was the Z we just calculated? Oh, that's right there. That's 0.52. Times. What was the standard deviation of process B in control? 10285. Boom. So K is 5349. We're really glad that we got a number that was equal to this. Okay? So K is 5349. So that means that the probability of investigating process B when it is in control is 0 0.3015. So the probability of investigating process B when it is in control is 0 0.3015 if we call this 5349 our cutoff. That 5349 corresponds to that 2530 in the in the problems. Now the second question here in D is using this new policy, what's the probability of an out of control cost variance process for process B being investigated? So we're going to use 5349 and an out of control process B. That's that's exactly the same as we did here for part B, except we're using 5349 instead of 2531. So instead of this 2931, we're going to be using 5349. So I'm just going to copy and paste and change things as we go. So the new target is 5349. It's still process B. There's the mean out of control. There's the standard deviation out of control. That corresponds to negative 0 0.10753524 um, rounded to two decimal places. This is 0 0.11. And now we go to the back of the book. We've got a z-score of negative 0.11. So we look for a negative 0.1 along the left-hand side and a 0.01 along the top. We get a probability of 0.4562. That's the probability that x is less than or equal to 5349. We don't want less than or equal to. We want greater than. So that final probability is going to be equal to 1 minus what we just calculated, 5438. Notice, as expected, the probability of investigating process B is less with a higher cutoff than it was with the lower cutoff. Not much less. 10% less. So here's what we did in this problem. We actually did two types of things. Type of thing number one is we calculated probabilities given x's. And the process was take that x, transform it into a z-score. For this problem we had to also round it to two decimal places. Once we've got that rounded z-score, we go to the back of the book, get the probability. This is the probability that, less, that z is less than or equal to that score. We, here we didn't want less than or equal to, it said exceeds, so we want greater than. To go from less than or equal to to greater than, we just subtract the probability from 1. That was A, B, well actually these are all B's here. For problem D, we kind of had to do the opposite. We were given a probability and had to calculate that, that X here, it's a K. 
So we were given the probability of 0 0.3015. That's the probability that x is greater than k. The table in the back of the book only gives less than or equal to, so we had to subtract that 0 0.3015 from 1. We went to the back of the book, that awesome z table, looked for 0.6985 back there, found out that the corresponding z score is 0.52. So the z-score is 0.52, then we just use this second formula. We have the mu, we have the z we just calculated, we have the sigma, and that will help us calculate x or k. In doing so, in, again, the process was for process, uh, the numbers were for process B in control. We came up with the k value of 5349, which means that for process B in control, the probability x is greater than 53.49 is 3.015. Part B here said, OK, we'll use that cutoff of 53.49, but we won't go with it being in control. We'll look at what, ha what the probability when B is out of control. So we just do what we did back in problem B. Calculate the z-score. 53.49 is the new cutoff. 64.55 is the mean of process B, the mean of x in process B when it's in control. 102.85 is the standard deviation. Round that to two decimal places. Go to the back of the book, find out that negative 0.11 corresponds to a probability of 0.4562. Again, that probability is the probability that x is less than or equal to 53.49. We don't want the probability x is less than or equal to 53.49. We want the probability it's greater than. To go from a less than or equal to to greater than, we just subtract that probability from 1, 0.5438. A lot of information here. Notice that this is difficulty hard. A lot of information here. Play this through a couple times. And now go back to problem 4, because problem 4 uses a lot of what we did here. So let's submit it. Let's see that we got 10 out of 10. Well, 10 out of 10 for that problem. So I hope this was a lot of help. It was longer than most. These are getting longer as the semester wears on. So take care of yourself. Keep in touch.